So if you don't mind, flip over into Romans chapter 5, if you haven't already, and let's look into this. He starts off with with chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, so in everything he's been talking about, 1 through 4, since this is true, we have been justified by faith. Past tense. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that our suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And the hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through his Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Now, in this beginning where he begins to kind of break down real life, he goes right to it to suffering. But it's important to says, since we have been justified by faith, and I want to make a side point here because it comes into play. So in biblical, in Bible translation, and this is stuff you can look up for yourself. Uh, there's also a shameless plug. There's a book on the back. It's called Can We Still Believe the Bible? It's written by Craig Blomberg, and he'll be here December 4th. He's uh, one of the, he's the New Testament poobah at uh, Denver Seminary. So he's actually going to talk about the validity of the scriptures December 4th. Did I say December 4th? It's December 4th uh, at uh, 10 a.m., two sessions. So if you'd like to be part of that, go ahead and sign up. But the point is this. The Bible is reliable, okay? Knowing the Bible is reliable, how does it, how does it work? How is it, this is a side note. How is it translated? It's translated because if you had a biology teacher like my biology teacher... They were geniuses. They knew everything, right, in high school. And somewhere down the road, that biology teacher read a pamphlet and became a genius and an expert on how the Bible is translated. And maybe you've heard this before. The Bible has been translated so many times in so many languages, how is it possibly valid anymore? And you go, oh, it has been like 2,000 years. That's a lot of years. I mean, people can get some stuff confused. And if we're talking Old Testament, I mean, shoot, now we're getting 4,000 years. Is it really reliable? How does it work? Here's the deal. We have about 5,500 scraps. I say scraps. I just mean pieces of the Bible. Uh, from all the, way, all the way back to the Aramaic translations that for about 100 AD and, and on. And, and they're different sizes. Like when I say scraps, you literally have pieces that are like this big that will have like Greek scrolling on it or Hebrew scrolling, something like that, or Aramaic. And then you have things like the Dead Sea Scrolls, where you have an entire scroll of the book of Isaiah, right? And the cool thing about all these scraps, other than like punctuation or syntax type stuff, there's only 0.05% deviation in those scraps. Does that make sense? So they only argue about 0.05%, meaning they don't match up. Because we don't have like Paul's actual letter. I mean, the Vatican might. They have a ton of stuff locked up, uh, locked up but they don't really let people see that. But, so it's, but what we have, general scholarship for the New Testament, that's, that's what we have, and the Old Testament. That's what we have. And so when they go through and they translate it, it doesn't get translated millions of times with millions of languages. It goes from what we have in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, in Latin, to what you have into English. And all those scraps get considered and, and consulted. So when somebody comes along and they mean well or mean poorly, whatever they mean, and they say, oh, it's been translated so many times, and you just can't trust it. It's just not true. It's either said out of ignorance or it's said out of a lie. So we're not here to judge their hearts. Why am I saying that? Because this is one of the places where the, the, the scriptures, they don't completely agree. So what is it? How do we do it? The most reliable ones and the most, uh, some of the oldest ones they have, we have, it says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God. The we isn't actually there in the bulk of them. And the idea is actually the, the, the most likely translation. And I want to be careful here because I'm not trying to change anything. We have peace with God is just as true, okay? But really the idea that's being communicated here is let us enjoy or let us have the peace of God. In other words, for the purpose of experience, continue in that peace. Does that make sense? We do have peace, and we're told that. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us that. Ephesians 3 tells us that Christ is our peace, okay? But in this gear switch, and it's going to, the context for that translation will continue on into the next, the next section here. 
The idea of letting this peace, let, you know, be in that peace is this. You have peace through Christ, which is the very good news. And when it says you have peace, the idea, the, the Greek is you perpetually always have peace in Christ. Here's this. It's not so much that we're at peace with him. That's great. But it's better news than that because he is at peace with you in Christ. How much of our lives or your life or my life is spent trying to make sure that God has peace with me? Trying to make sure like, I'm, like he's a bad dad and I have to talk him down before he gets drunk and he beats me. Or that he's just waiting to assault me or he's just so unhappy with me and, and I have to walk on eggshells or else I'm done for. And so in this practical step that Paul is taking in justification by grace through faith is this. Stop trying to make peace. Instead, you just stand in the peace that God has for you. We'll talk about more about that later. His peace is always available to you. He is always at peace with you. The question is, what do we do with that peace? And likewise, also this grace. In the wording here, the same thing with when he says we. He says, through him, we also, or through him, let us also obtain access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And the idea is this, that grace is always there. Obtained access literally means we have the privilege to approach. So he says to us, the idea here is let's always maintain, and I, I want to be careful with maintain, but let's always make sure that we're staying in that grace. See, God is not taking his peace and his grace from us. It's not that if we're naughty one day, well, then he says, you don't get my peace because you're naughty and you don't deserve it. And then we're naughty one day and we sin it up and we, you know, whatever we do in traffic or whatever happens. And, we, and, and then he goes, well, you don't, you don't get my grace anymore because you sin, so you don't get my grace. That's the absolute opposite of what he says. We know from Hebrews that we have boldness to come to the throne of grace in our time of need. When do you need grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. Do you need God's unmerited favor if you could be good enough? Do you need unmerited favor from God if, if, if you could somehow do enough works to approach his throne? Would any of us be so pompous to say, well, I was good enough this week that I deserve to pray and ask God to provide for me. I deserve to go right to his throne room any old time I want because I'm good enough. We act like it sometimes. In, 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 in weird ways, I think worship, for me, is one of the, the most stark ways. Because if we feel like we've had a good week, man, we come into worship and, we're, you know, we're singing and we're rocking and God is good and we're just like, whoa, right? If we've been naughty this week, we're like, you're good, Lord. I don't really deserve to be here, right? Isn't that what we do? What are we saying? My standing before your throne, I don't have boldness to come in in a time of need. I don't have boldness because of what Christ did. I only have boldness when I'm good. We try to stand in our own righteousness. But see, what's being communicated here is the way we walk with Christ, it's not that we started with grace and now we stand in our own righteousness. That's cultish. That's weird. That's legalism. We come and worship the Lord because we say, I know I'm unworthy. I know that I failed this week. I'm not proud of it. I'm not boasting in that. But I'm boasting in your grace. I'm boasting in your kindness. I'm boasting that, that Christ was enough. I lift my hands to worship you because Christ is enough. Not because I was good enough to lift my hands. This is a pocket Sunday. This is a hand lift Sunday. But because he's good. There's so many ways where we constantly revert back to this idea. If I've been naughty, then grace doesn't apply. And Paul is not saying that. He's saying in the tough things of life, in all things of life, make sure that you continue to stand in God's peace, meaning acknowledging he's at peace with you, acknowledging that he has favor for you, and walking in the love he has for you. And he's going to describe that love a little bit. And so it's, it seems uh, appropriate that right out of the gate when he's talking about the things of life and how to walk in grace and, and walk in this unbelievable um, uh, well, grace, justification that we have, that he brings up suffering. And I, I'm actually, uh, sorry, I want to note one more thing. Because he says there, uh, he says, the faith, I'll read the whole thing, verse 2. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Just, just for kicks, the word stand there, it's in the present active. 
or excuse me, the perfect active. And so what that means is the grace that we have been placed in that we will perpetually stand in. That's the idea. It's grace in perpetuity. It doesn't mean in which we stood when we were good and then we don't stand in when we're bad. It's the grace that through Christ we, per- we will stand in and not be removed. Mm-hmm.